With the road to Battlefield 6 ahead of us, getting ready to hit the ground running when it drops is going to be super important. I've heard through certain secret contacts of mine that the next Battlefield game is indeed set in modern times and will have over 100 players in certain modes. It could live up to the hype. Recent easter eggs have hinted at a return to Battlefield 2 with a setting in Kazakhstan, but wherever DICE choose to base the game I want to make sure I'm ready to hit the ground running and I'll use the next 12 months to try and improve my skill in FPS games. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at improving your accuracy in Battlefield games with a focus on the mouse that you use and how to improve your aim. Logitech, my favourite peripheral brand by far, recently released the Pro X Superlite, a lightweight variant of the G Pro Wireless. It's a mouse I've been looking forward to using for ages. I thought it would be a good idea to show you this mouse and do a bit of a mouse shootout with other Logitech mice that I've been using over the past three or four years to help those people who are looking maybe to get themselves a new one. I've also called in the help of two of the best Battlefield players I've ever known, Nickel and Daz. Both will give their opinions on a bunch of things, alongside a breakdown of the new Superlight and some Battlefield 4 gameplay. Hopefully this will help you improve, and maybe you'll gain something from the video in time for Battlefield 6. So to start out, there are a few things you need to take into account when you're trying to improve your accuracy and you're looking at the mouse on your desk. First of all, what's the shape like? Does it fit your grip style? Does it feel comfortable? The weight of the mouse. Lighter is usually better. Some people prefer maybe 70, 80 grams. I, after using the super light, really like around 60 grams, but that's up to you. The glide. How does it move over the mouse pad? Is it a smooth and linear feeling? What are the skates like on the bottom of the mouse? Do they slide over your mouse pad really smoothly? Also, the buttons. Does it have all the buttons you require for the games you play? Some people like just one or two thumb buttons. Other people like loads of buttons if they play a game that requires it. And finally, the price. Is it within your budget? Some mice are obviously better than others and premium products often command a premium price. To make these topics a little easier to visualise, we will be comparing a few mice side by side. You can clearly see here the difference in size between these Logitech mice. They're all mine, and it shows the journey I've been on in recent years, starting out with a wired G403, and then the G903, which was one of the first wireless mice that I moved to, the G Pro Wireless, which is the best mouse, to be honest, I think I've ever used, and was certainly a massive jump, and then the Superlight, which I've been using for the past few days, it's amazing. It's like a G Pro wireless, but just better really in every way. All the improvements I wanted from that G Pro is now here with the wireless. I've also noticed a few differences since moving onto the Superlight, mainly due to the low weight. In Battlefield, for anyone who does play a lot of Battlefield, you know that you have a really big benefit from having faster aim and being able to 180 or move to targets that appear out of nowhere. The Superlight really does help in that regard. How can you improve your aim? Well, taking Battlefield as an example, it's a great game to improve your accuracy and depending on what game you pick, whether it's BF4 or maybe BF5, you can master your movement as well. This is where I've brought in the expertise of Nickel, a very good Battlefield player. I've got actually a little example in the background of what he's done to his older mouse. You can see he started to strip little bits off it just to kind of make it a lighter, better mouse for him. It fits his hand better, he's got the grip tape. It's just something that people like to do, you know? If you're using a mouse all day on a certain game, you know what it needs to make it better. And I will say that the Super Light does kind of cut some of these corners for you, so you don't have to put some tin foil in the little battery tray to enable you to use a lighter and smaller battery little things like that that really do make a difference. And this is what Nickel had to say anyway about improving your accuracy in Battlefield. First, get the basics right. Try different mouse shapes and you'll quickly understand what works best for you and what doesn't. Everyone is different just because I or someone else can do well with a certain mouse, grip style or sensitivity doesn't mean you're gonna be able to replicate this. Finding the optimal setup is a journey for everyone. After finding a mouse you're comfortable with, make sure you have a sensitivity that allows you to do a comfortable 180 degree turn in game while being quick enough in close quarters but still accurate at long range. That might take a while. Make sure to record your own gameplay and rewatch the moments where your aim failed. Analyze those moments and determine the cause of your failure. Is the sensitivity at fault? Adjust it and if you still have problems a week later, it might be the mouse you're using. Maybe your mouse skates don't allow you to track smoothly. 
you can replace them. Maybe you're sweating, making the mouse slippery and thus losing control. Put on some grip tape and then try again. Maybe you aim better with a control or speed mouse pad. Most of those things require you buying aftermarket accessories, but not with the super light. It's a great all rounder shape. It's wireless lightweight, glides smoothly with those mouse skates, and it even comes with extra grip tape out of the box. And with the super light, you don't have to waste time buying the right aftermarket accessories anymore. And you can focus on the most important things like finding the best mouse pad for you. So that is what Nickel had to say. And to be honest, it actually helped me a lot as well. It might seem simple, but often it's the simple things that make the biggest differences. These clips from Nickel are probably beyond what I could consistently achieve, but I have definitely noticed an improvement in my aim since moving to the Superlight. The clip at the start with the Scar H on Shanghai Rush, I found that to be slightly more accurate than my usual sort of gameplay. I was concentrating on the aim as well, but I just felt like I had more control. That pursuit of lightness is being done for a reason by these mouse companies. It places the user in more control with the mouse helping to adjust when it comes to aiming. One major thing that you need to understand though when buying a mouse is your grip type. For this, I'll hand over to Daz, an FPS player with a wealth of experience that you should definitely take advantage of. Hey everybody, it's Sword Daz here. So what I'm gonna help you guys figure out is the various grip styles and why the G Pro and the Super Light are so popular. If you're wondering why it looks a little different, I actually used the grip tape that it came with. I'm also gonna do a comparison with the G305, which is also a Logitech mouse, to kind of better help guide you. So why the Super Light is so popular? It is because of its shape and the amount of options you have to grip it. So there are three different styles that I wanna talk about here briefly with you guys. The first one that is my personal favorite is the fingertip grip. The fingertip grip is where you hold your mouse and you have each of your finger points touching various angles of the mouse. So that's why I'm quite zoomed in so you can see it. Notice how the back of my palm is not touching the mouse and I'm not palming the mouse. Now what is great about the G Pro, obviously, is that you can palm the mouse if you like. So if you palm it, you can definitely do that. Usually people who palm their mouse tend to have a lower sensitivity, which can also be quite beneficial. Now as well as there's a claw grip. So this is a mix where you kind of see the fingers go more of an arc style. And you can also see the back of the mouse touches, obviously, the back of your hand. Now, if we compare, this is where the difference with the G305 is you notice is that the profile is much lower on the uh, G305. This mouse is a little bit harder to palm. Can definitely do it, but realize just how much your fingers will overextend on it compared to, obviously, as you can tell, the G Pro. The G Pro just feels a lot more comfortable. This is the same issue that individuals have with the super light of the final mouse and it's why pros will stick with the g pro wireless i have it right over here this one is just plugged in it is also a wireless mouse but why the super light is so commonly used among pros among the scene so i hope this helps you guys find the right mouse for you remember it's all about shape and personal preference but i can definitely tell you that the shape of the super light is massively beneficial to various styles that you feel comfortable with this is a medium sized mouse. Again, when you're looking at its overall shape, so it's kind of sits right in the middle. It's not too large, not too small compared to the G305 or let's say the ultralight. I will let Art take it away with the rest of the video. So I think the best thing to take away from the conversation with Daz there is that this is subjective really. It's about what you prefer with a mouse. Are you someone who's got a big hand and you like to have a big mouse? Are you someone with a small hand and you prefer a smaller mouse? Are you somebody like me who has to have kind of a neutral shape like the G Pro or the Super Light? Something that is really going to be quite forgiving even when you change your grip styles, which is something that I said I've actually done quite a lot through playing different games. That's something that you'll have to learn, although what I will say straight away is that going for a safer shape is probably the best way to start and then moving on to something else in the future once you realize that that's really where you want to go with the mouse. That's something that you could do. A big important thing as well is the mouse pad. Going for a high quality mouse pad, one that is going to really complement the mouse and the sort of speed that you're going for is important check out Daz's channel for more information on that. He's got tons of mouse pads and he does go into quite a lot of detail and depth talking about which one is best for your different styles. 
drawbacks for the super light as we are focusing on that a little bit in this video well the price it's quite expensive some people say well the g pro wireless is this much and then the super lights maybe the same price or a little bit more and you're actually getting less mouse well that's because of the development of the mouse you know they've made this thing strong sturdy it feels quality it doesn't have loads of holes drilled in it to bring the weight down it's actually really light in the mouse world 60 grams is very light and it's a quality product the battery life lasts forever 80 hours or something like that which is really good for a wireless mouse really you pay for what you get with something like this you can go cheaper with other mice even logitech they do cheap wireless mice if that's what you're after and they are very good but they're not as good as the super light so it's just finding what you can afford and really buying the best that you can afford at that time as you can see with some of the Battlefield 4 gameplay in this video, I've tried to label who it belongs to as well because I don't want you thinking that it's my gameplay when it clearly belongs to a better player or somebody else. And maybe you watch the top plays as well. You'll know that it's really satisfying when you watch a clip that has just got really good aim. Changing your mouse isn't going to turn you into a pro player. Certainly it won't do that, but it will definitely assist you. If you're somebody who's trying to get better, making sure you have the best equipment in front of you is important. And that's something that I'm looking to improve on. Through the next 12 months, I'm going to be trying out some aim trainers. I'm going to be looking to play a bit more Battlefield because I have taken a bit of time away from FPS games recently. And I'm going to try and improve. So when I jump onto Battlefield 6, I'm ready. And I'm not going to be maybe falling behind to all of these players that come into new games and they, you know, look to destroy you. I want to be that person who's been doing the practice, putting in the training. And really, I'll be providing you with some great content, hopefully, as well. So let me know what you think of this down in the comments. It's a bit of a different video, taking a look at that super light and maybe showing you how you could improve in Battlefield. Thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next video.